Hi, this is Bastian, and today we're going to take a look at uh, some gamut play in the Van Cross opening. And the Van Cross is an opening that is rarely seen and starts out with e3. I'm playing against Bestia, uh, which is a 2100 plus rated engine. Black responds with uh, knight to f6. Um, reserving options to take control of the center with e5 or uh, d5. So a possible continuation of white would be to play d4 and use the e pawn to support that position. But that's not what we're going to see today. I continue with knight to c3. Black makes his choice and plays e5 to control the center. And now instead of the logical d4 move, I play a gambit move, which is um, pawn to f4. And players who play bird's opening and play gambits in that opening will feel right at home with this. Black takes the pawn. I develop knight to f3. Black takes the second pawn. So I'm uh, down two pawns for the moment, and I can recapture one. And now I play the aggressive d4. So we can see that this pawn uh, cannot be protected, and I'm getting uh, some control in the center with both knights and one pawn. The downside, of course, is that I needed to sacrifice one pawn um, to do so. Furthermore. I'm getting free development of the bishop, and after which, with two pieces uh, surrounding the king, I can decide to castle kingside or queenside. So this makes it all very flexible. Of course, we notice that knight to g4 seems possible to protect that knight, uh, pawn, but actually, it doesn't work because after queen to d3, I can get a second attacker on the e pawn and after capturing I'm ready to castle queen side. Now if black continues with queen to e7 in hopes of protecting this pawn I can play knight to d5 and we can see that white already has a lot of tactics going on. We are gaining tempo attacking the queen and it looks like we can grab the pawn on c7 and fork king and rook. If queen to c um, d6 uh, to protect that pawn, I can play queen to e4 check, putting pressure on the pawn on g4, that uh, the knight on g4 that has become overextended. So if the king moves, I can either play queen takes knight. And queen recaptures and get the position I was aiming for. But better yet is to continue with the uh, tactics and play knight to g5, threatening the pawn on f7. After which black is in a very uncomfortable position, which is very odd after a Van Kras opening. So Knight to g4 defenses don't seem to work. But black has a second idea. Let's go back after knight to g4 and queen to d3. Instead of defending the pawn with a queen move, what if black were to play knight to f2? This attacks and forks the rook and the queen. And of course the knight cannot be recaptured because it is protected by the pawn. Again I've had this played against me a few times and it's a failing attack simply because white can now play queen takes pawn check um, attacking the knight and the king. Queen blocks which makes it impossible to grab um, the knight with the queen but now simply the king can step up, king takes knight, and black is down a minor piece. So that's how we deal with um, 
the knight to g4 jump that tries to protect the pawn. So it's typically losing for black. Instead, the engine doesn't play it and plays a more sensible move bishop to b4, attacking the knight. And we can see it's impossible for us to defend with the bishop because the pawn is protecting it. Also, if we grab the pawn again, black can take the knight, check, and it will force us to uh, double the pawns. There's no way for white to prevent this. So after bishop to b4, I grab the pawn, bishop takes knight, check, bishop recaptures. Black castles into safety, and I play bishop to e2, and I'm castling um, kingside with uh, the advantage of um, a half open file with the rook on f1. Now, when we play a gambit and sacrifice a pawn, it seems very logical to play a move that is passive, like bishop to e2. It looks better to play it to d3, but actually it isn't so. White must still be cautious um, in this phase of the game. If bishop to d3 is played, black can play rook to e8, threatening the bishop. And if white castles, of course, he loses the bishop. Instead, if queen to d2 to protect and gets ready to castle kingside or queenside, black can add more pressure with queen to um, e7. And of course, the bishop cannot move because our sting, uh, king is still uh, stuck in uh, the center. Um, white will be forced to play king to e2 to support that bishop. Of course, king to f2 to support the bishop is not possible because of um, knight to g4 check. So that's why we don't play um, an aggressive move like bishop to d3, but counterintuitively a passive looking move like bishop to e2. Black plays rook to e8, no surprises there. And instead of castling, I play bishop to g5. d5. Now I castle. There's only one um, attacker on the bishop. Knight to um, c6. Knight to h4. Um, simply because there are no other ways to develop uh, the knight. If knight to um, e5 is played, knight takes, pawn recaptures, and rook takes, and the rook is on the um, open file, and black is up another pawn. So knight to h4 is played, looking to play knight to uh, f5 at some point. Rook to e6, a very nice move. This allows the queen to be played to e8 on the open file, making it stronger. Also, after queen to e8, there's no longer any danger of um, queen takes and pawn recaptures, opening up a hole for the king. Because after um, the queen has moved, if I capture the knight, he can recapture, of course, with the rook. Queen to e8 also puts a lot of pressure on the bishop on e2, but it's going to move anyways. Game continues with knight to f5, so I'm um, sticking with my plan. h6 to chase away the bishop. Bishop retreats. Queen to e8, the predictable move. Bishop to f3. So we have to give black control of the open file. But with bishop to f3, we are attacking um, the pawn on d5. And we can see that this uh, pawn is protected by the knight. There's no longer any queen support. And we have an attack going on the knight. So let's see if we can do something with it. Black continues with knight to a5, developing in the same way as myself, um, looking to play knight to c4. 
and now let's have a look if we can take out the knight and then grab a free pawn if bishop takes knight and rook recaptures so there are no um, double pawns bishop takes pawn but all of a sudden we can see a discovered attack on the knight on f5 so bishop takes for instance so sadly there are no free pawns um, for white knight to a5 and I play queen to d3 and queen to d3 not only develops the queen but it also um, adds support to the knight on f5 against the discovered attack and now I am threatening bishop takes and then bishop takes pawn so that's why we play queen to d3 black plays knight to e4 to prevent that uh, support with a nice knight outpost of course um, I can recapture but uh, there are uh, three supporting pieces rook to the open file as well so that's one benefit of having um, the open file locked of the out of the rook so I can develop rooks on the open file as well and build up more pressure black plays g5 and this move um, well with this move black tries to take out my bishop on h4 because the bishop uh, has only two squares left to retreat to and both can be attacked uh, by the knight we also notice that um, the backwards h6 pawn is protected by black's rook development a very aggressive and provocative move by black so there are two things I can do get this bishop into safety or start attacking um, black's pieces so I take out the bishop on uh, the knight on e4 and there are two ways um, to recapture let's say pawn recaptures a move that wasn't played so uh, we can see that the rook is still protecting the pawn on h6 now queen to g3 our bishop is still under attack but it cannot be taken because of the discovered check and if king to h7 I can simply crash through bishop takes pawn pawn recaptures queen takes pawn and I can simply rook lift for a mate and if rook to h6 I get a mate with queen to g7 if another move is played like queen to g8 check checkmate also possible and if no defensive measures are taken of course I can simply play a, a rook lift so after queen to g3 we can see that the bishop cannot be taken and if king to h7 um, to get out of the discovered check isn't played but rook to g6 instead is played we can continue with uh, knight takes pawn attacking uh, the second pawn so again we are crashing through but in a different way and if rook takes queen takes pawn check let's not forget the knight on a5 we're also attacking uh, the rook on h6 and of course this is lost for black so um, pawn recaptures bishop It's losing for black rook recaptures was played instead so I uh, grab the pawn check king to g7 queen to g3 
No, the king can take on the knight, but this will lead to uh, queen takes pawn check, king h7, queen h5 check, king g8, bishop f6, and there is no uh, preventing the mate's uh, queen to h8. Say rook h4, uh, checkmate with rook to e8, doesn't seem to work. If a random move is played, queen to h8, checkmate. So that's what would happen if black grabs the knight. Move wasn't played, so the knight is untouchable. f6 was played instead. Game continues with bishop takes pawn, so again I am crashing through. Pawn takes bishop. Queen takes pawn check, queen blocks, rook to f7 check, and the rook is pr uh, protected by the knight, and the queen cannot recapture because of the discovered check. King to h8, and black has lost his queen. Of course, we do not bother with recapturing it. Um, queen to d8 check is a um, checkmate in uh, two moves. Rook blocks, grab it, check, and queen to g8, finally the checkmate with um, queen takes rook on g8. So that's how we can spice up our games with the Van Kras opening, with a little bit of gambit play. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, please leave a comment, and have a great evening.